All right, everybody. Hey, we're here for the U.S. Biochar Initiative, uh, Biochar Funding Opportunity with uh, USDA and RCS Code 336 and 808. Uh, these are the soil carbon amendments. Uh, we have fantastic pre presenters today from uh, the USDA and RCS, the Soil Health Division, basically the top brass. They're all here to present for you today. So it's going to be really fantastic. So first off, what I want to do, thank everybody for attending. I want to do, I do want to record you this being, remind you this is being recorded. And today's session does qualify for CEU credits for you certified crop advisors. Oops, here we go. Okay, so a little bit about USBI. We were established back in 2009. We were a nonprofit, so uh, a, a number of volunteers that are deeply dedicated to biochar and uh, building an industry around a material that really has some fantastic benefits for a number of concerns that we have in modern life. Our activities include conferences, workshops, demonstrations, uh, webinars like today. We have a newsletter. We do our website. We offer a directory. Uh, I want to encourage any pro uh, biochar producers that are attending. If you're not listed in our directory, please do go and get uh, listed. Uh, we provide a whole lot of referrals. Uh, and uh, technical advice, and we also moderate the biochar uh, groups.io. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to encourage you to sign up for our newsletter as well as attend the groups if you want to be in an active chat discussion. Hey, that's me. I'm your program host. I'm the uh, newly minted director of communications. I've been on the board for about a year and some change and then came on as the director of communications. I, uh, in full disclosure, I am also a biochar producer in Salt Lake City, Utah. I've got a company called Go Biochar. Uh, so i uh, been doing biochar all of a sudden done just a little over three and a half years now. So uh, thank you for attending today. And uh, our day one presenters today will be uh, the folks, as we said, from NRCS. And then tomorrow we're going to be hearing from uh, the people on the Biochar Atlas. We'll hear from Josiah and Charlie with Pacific Biochar. They're going to be talking about practical applications in soil. Uh, Tom Miles, who is a USBI board member as well as an IBI board member, will be talking about uh, the three S's, shipping safety uh, and uh, storage of biochar. Uh, Phil Bloom from Terrachar will have about a 30-minute presentation. He's going to be talking about compost and, uh, and applications. Uh, in in field, and then we will have an, also a, a presentation on the web soil survey tool that's fantastic. So we do want to take a moment to thank our supporting financial sponsors, Wakefield Biochar, Vow, AS, Vow ASA, Grain Ecosystems. They're new to the market in that they're doing project finance, so we're very excited to see them come on. A uh, big shout out and thank you to American Farmland Trust, the U.S. Composting Council, uh, Go Biochar is a sponsor, and uh, huge kudos to uh, the U.S. Forest Service, where we do receive a significant amount of our funding. Again, U.S. Biochar is not a dues-based organization. We are a volunteer organization, so we do rely on grants and uh, philanthropic support. If you're interested in uh, sponsoring programs or the update of our new website, I'm the guy, so please reach out to me. Um, my contact information will be provided later and uh, we can make arrangements. All right, so we've got the schedule today. Uh, we're gonna be talking, uh, I'm gonna do the brief overview uh, and introduction. And from there, we're gonna move on to the NRCS and Farm Bill Programs o uh, Overview with Ilana Cohen. After that, it's Conservation Planning Assistance with Matt Flint. We will take a, a 10 minute break after those uh, two sessions. Uh, each of these sessions will be 25 to 30 minutes long. Uh, we'll probably, we'll hold either a, a 10 to 15 minute Q and A after each session. So you will have time to get your questions answered. And as well, at the end, we will do a group panel to answer all of your questions. So uh, after that break, when we come back, it's our, we're gonna spend some time with Michael Margo. He's going to review the NRCS Soil Carbon Amendment Conservation Practice Standards. 
Uh, and I think that's uh, it's one of the parts that we're all going to really enjoy. And then I'll do a wrap up and introduction of what we will be presenting on Thursday's event. And then we'll go into our Q&A. So again, schedule day one. Uh, And then here's a brief overview of what's gonna happen in day two. Introduction, the Atlas, lots of discussions. Now I'm gonna move on to what I really like talking about, and that's biochar. So biochar is an ancient story of regenerative, regenerative baking. It's an ancient soil conditioner. It was, it's been used in agriculture for thousands of years. Uh, it was it's had known use by a number of different indigenous groups groups throughout human history, uh, has a number of different names, uh, really didn't get the name biochar until a decade or two ago. Um, it's important to note, this is, this is old wisdom. It's something that's been around a long time. It's also an excellent waste material solution because what we can do is we can convert organic biomass into biochar by exposing it to high heat in the absence of oxygen. You can do this in a number of ways. You can convert it uh, in a pit in a field up to a really fancy modern day pyrolyzer. Uh, there's pyrolyzers, gasifiers, and a number of other options. So uh, this brings about a number of benefits. So we eliminate the waste stream. We convert that uh, material down to about 30% of its orig original size. So if you start out with a chunk of wood about that big and you convert it to biochar, it's going to be much smaller. Uh, and, and it turns into a valuable product that we can install in soils and we can also use it for forest health. And as we're learning and as more and more investment comes into the biochar industry, it, we're creating a lot of really fantastic jobs and reducing fire risk while we're at it. So probably been hearing about this a whole lot in magazines and online streaming services and kids are saying, hey, what about biochar? Is it magic? Because, you know, we hear a lot of hype about all this. And simple answer is no, biochar is not magic, but it sure can feel like it. I'll tell you the experience that most of us producers have is that our customers love it. They start out a little skeptic, they install it, they utilize it, they have uh, fantastic results. But does biochar fix everything? I mean, again, we're hearing it's pretty much a wonder material. And the answer is no. But it is science. And it's backed, here's, this is very important, it's backed by over 30,000 peer reviewed technical papers. Isn't that something? That's pretty amazing. Uh, so while it doesn't fix everything, it fixes many things. Biochar is carbon. It's a simple material with many elegant solutions to the problems we face today. So, and that's what we're gonna get to and more and more as we start covering the 336. And again, biochar is ancient wisdom. It's ancient earth wisdom and it's in the hands of humankind. Your hands can make biochar at home, in field, or you can write your checks to buy it. <laughs> so again, let's, let's get this right. And also, uh, one of the things you're going to find out about this is once you start working it with it, man, biochar is beauty. And it's a beauty that comes in many different forms and shapes. Effectively, like as mentioned before, we can convert just about any kind of uh, carbon-based material into biochar by exposing it to the high temperatures in the absence of oxygen. And as we covered earlier, it is a waste management it's a way to reduce the total materials. So you can see some biochar down here on, on the lower left. Uh, that's what it typically looks like in a small chip form when you get it. And then you can see the micro and macro pores of the biochar. That porosity holds a tremendous amount of water. So and that's one of the most dominant characteristics about biochar uh, for infield application is that ability, it's one, but not the only one, the ability to hold a tremendous amount of water and reduce drought stressors. And with over 70% of the United States currently suffering uh, a significant drought event, this is more important and critical than ever. So, and then you can see what it looks like when we have existing soil and then we mix in a little bit of biochar there. Uh, the good news is that biochar has many wins. So it reduces soil compaction and improves nutrient distribution as the water holding capacity that we talked about. 
Uh, it increases soil organic matter and soil carbon. That's because this is a recalcitrant form of carbon that has durability in soil. Um, studies are showing that the durability of biochar after 1000 years in soil, you will still have 75% of that carbon in soil. So it's durable. And you know what? It's basically like high rise condos to all the beneficial microbes, bacteria, and the mycorrhizal fungi. So on the graphic below, you can see what biochar amended soil looks like. So we have the regular soil with biochar amended soil on the side. Uh, we can talk about the porosity. So that porosity does a number of things. First, it allows for the infiltration of critical elements such as water and oxygen. Secondly, it allows for the respiration of CO2 uh, and, and other items to come out of the soil. So that way the biology can breathe. Uh, what this ends up meaning is that we get uh, a, a more durable and enjoyable uh, soil structure for our plants. Biochar has many characteristics. They can, they're physical, chemical, biological, electrochemical, uh, and these properties improve soil health and build resi resilience. Uh, they're fine-grained. Again, biochar is something you can literally make at home. You can make it in the field. Um, but it does require some attention and some knowledge. Um, but it, it creates a highly porous charcoal that helps soil retain nutrients and water. So instead of and it, it extends the value of your inputs. So anything that you're putting in, water, nutrients, fertilizer, it will uh, create a slow release. So and it's uh, as you can see in the, the middle graphic, it's very agreeable for things like the mycorrhizal fungi. So. Again, you can see more of the structure. You see all those little nooks and crannies there. Um, they love that. It's a stable shelter. Uh, the electromagnetic, uh, the electrochemical process allows those microbes to, uh, it gives them a broader reach. It allows them to find food. It allows them to, uh, it assists in some reproductive measures. Uh, all said and done, it's uh, it's tremendously beneficial. And again, there's a, a significant number of peer-reviewed papers on biochar. And so if anybody has questions, feel free to email us at the U.S. Biochar and we can connect you. Uh, we can also reference you to the resources like the U.S. Biochar Initiative's homepage for the uh, learning directory uh, and Google, Google Scholar and the, uh, the biochar.groups.io are also excellent resources. Wanted to give you a quick um, uh, a, a quick example of uh, the growth that we can see when applying biochar to soils. This is uh, uh, Green Fund Frontier Compost. Uh, Phil Blum, who you will be hearing from tomorrow from TerraChar. This is one of his customers. And again, the this is uh, the testimonial that you see here on the side is not uncommon at all for customers that are acquiring biochar. Um, it um, it's important that we do install biochar with some kind of a nutrient management system. So co-composting is typically the most efficient way to do so. So again, this is ancient wisdom. Uh, you've, you may have heard of Terra Preta. Uh, these are human created soils that are 500 to 6,000 6, years old. Um, that person in the pit down there, that's Kelpie Wilson. She's uh, she's a longtime USBI board member and volunteer. Um, and thank you, Kelpie, because I'm taking a lot of information from your uh, previous slide decks. And uh, you can see her down there and you can see the uh, infiltration of the biochar into the soil subsurface. So, and the charcoal retains the nutrients that rain would otherwise leach out. So again, it's that it's providing durability durable soil carbon, durable nutrient distribution. Um, it just, again, it just amplifies your inputs. So, and for example, Iowa soils, 50% of all soil carbon in Iowa is bio, is uh, carbon. It's from uh, the natural part the prairie fires that used to take place. So uh, not only do we have examples over in the Amazon, we have examples right here at home in the United States. And again, studies after study after study shows that biochar helps to hold water and save money. This study concluded that we can see up to 37% savings in uh, 
drought environments. So from my own experience, uh, I, I can tell you that we are typically seeing that we can sort we can save uh, 20 to 25 percent uh, uh, water reduction uh, for home gardeners. Uh, we've worked with in some turf management operate uh, applications where we've saved as much as 50% on water. Uh, but again, it all it all depends, right? Biochar is not the magic. It's not a magic bullet, but boy, is it a foundational anchor to symphony for soil health. So, um, and again, uh, the US Biochar Initiative can help you with your with your uh, strategies. So food, we're talking about the, the benefits of biochar and it's uh, the food nutrients, they literally stick uh, to the biochar and then they'll hold on for a period of time and then they'll peel off. It's really pretty interesting the way that this happens. But uh, again, you can see on the chart, we've got lots of opportunities here. And this is a little bit more of a deep dive with some SEM imaging. We can see that the coating on the biochar surfaces, it looks a bit like a uh, the one on the right there looks a bit like a bone uh, with your biochar and then the organic coating. So again, that organic coating is going to be uh, food for plants and biology. And uh, here's the seeding formation of hummus and soil aggregates. Shows how it works there on the right. And as we know, improved soil aggregates is the number one measure of good soil. Microbes love biochar. Stable carbon won't degrade over time. The soil life binds uh, soil particles together. Uh, the water and nutrients are held in the soil for distribution to the plant roots, and those roots are happy. Again, we see a pretty significant, we commonly see a significant increase in above ground and below ground biomass. Here's a little teaser for day two. Uh, we're incorporating biochars and biochar blends. We'll show you some of the applications. I do want to briefly tell, we're just about to the pr first presentation. Uh, I do want to let you know that biochar acceptance is growing. Here's a paper from 2021. Uh, we're seeing exponential growth where you can see here we have uh, in purple, the scientific publications per year. So we're getting up to the 200 um, and and frankly, in 2022, we saw far more than uh, than the below 200 number, but we're getting literally getting to the point of hundreds of papers per year. And then the other important thing, uh, showing true adoption and, and true acceptance is the patents that are growing each and every year. So as we have millions of dollars coming into the industry, uh, it's going to be more and more of a force for good. So again, here we are with our day one presentation. We're going to be uh, starting out with uh, Alana, and she's leading the Farm Bill Conservation Programs for Biochar. She's going to cover eligibility requirements and how funding is provided to the customers. That wraps up our introduction. Thank you, everybody, and thank you to our sponsors. You've been watching the U.S. Biochar Initiative Soil Carbon Amendment Program uh, brought to you by the USDA, NRCS, and USBI. Uh, please watch for additional videos down below. Click and like.